Please welcome Joseph Z and his wife, Heather. Come on in, guys. Good to be with you. Hey, Dr. Doug. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Hey. Hey, Joni. Good Good to to see you, Heather. Bless you. All right. Good to see y'all. Good to see you. 2024. Yes, ma'am. We are here. We Um, are. I was listening to some of your... But he's already been here. Come on. Yes. He already has been. He's already been. (laughs) He's already. We were listening to some of um, what the Lord was kind of sharing with you for 2024. Yes. We wanted to share it with our audience and because... There are, you know, prophetic voices that you can trust. And I really do believe Joseph is one of those. And, uh, you know, God does reveal things to his people before anyone else. And what, is that scriptural? Talk about that. Absolutely. We know in the book of Amos, it says he reveals, he does nothing unless he first reveals his secret mm-hmm. to his prophets, his yeah. secret Amen. insights. Yeah. So just take us, if you will, through... Um, kind of when did the Lord start speaking to you about 2024? Because it was actually back a few years ago. It was, yeah. You know, Joni, um, in, in our broadcast many times, I'll begin drawing on the whiteboard and information comes mm-hmm. to me that mm-hmm. way. And I, the two years I'd seen since 2020 was 22 and 24, two windows. And I and believe... A little bit later, you're going to draw on the whiteboard. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you want to be sure to stay tuned for that. He's actually going to draw. But okay, so what year was that that you were... That Lord was showing you was that 2019 or? Uh, yeah, 2019. You know, there's a number of things the Lord did show me. He showed me number one that Trump would not win the election in 2020. He showed me that a lot of people did not appreciate that, but I do believe that you know, if all things were equal, that was a different narrative. But He showed mm. me what would happen publicly. We went live. We declared that. But what I saw for 22 and 24 was a window, two different windows. On March 15th of 2020, I stood up and had a prophetic word come to me that talked about that there would be the 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 lion, the bear, and Goliath, those three things. And when the lion happened, I believe that that was going to be the roar and the intimidation of what was coming against the nations Mm -hmm. and the nation. And it was going to be the voice of media, many lies, all of that. But then the bear was coming, and I believe that represented the fear of a market that would begin to dive down and have challenges. But Goliath, I believe we've not fully seen manifest yet. I believe this year we'll start that. And 25, which I'll get into in a moment, I believe there's a lot coming for that as well. And these scenarios we see, you know, we know in part, we prophesy in part, but it's very important that we prepare for what's coming. And so I saw these words, the war, the roar, and more uh, going into 24, the roar, the war, and more. And so the roar, the war, the more. That's right. Okay. And in New Year's Eve, we always do a live broadcast. And so we did this live broadcast Mm -hmm. of New Year's and the spirit of the Lord showed me that there was an open door, door would open up for 24. Did that surprise you when you saw that? It actually did surprise me because I actually thought we were going to go into a time of intense judgment as a nation. But I began to really sense that we would see instead of the grace we've been experiencing, we went from a time of grace to an extension of mercy. And I said, Lord, why are we going into a time of mercy? Because mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Mm, right. Where yeah. grace covers us, you know, grace is the empowerment, all that. But mercy, you don't get what you deserve. Mm-hmm. And the Lord brought me all the way back to a prophecy we gave in 2020 that Roe v. Wade would be overturned by an unprecedented ruling by the Supreme Court. When he showed me this, the Lord said, and I will extend even more mercy to the land for 24, even though we're going to have turbulence, even though there's going to be unprecedented challenges and difficulties. I saw mercy. And then at the end of 24, I saw the door slam shut. And the door slamming shut showed me that the Lord said we would come to the Valley of Decision, and there would be either Nineveh or fire mm-hmm. in 25. Well, explain to the audience who may not know, what do you mean when you say there would be Nineveh? Well, Nineveh was a nation that obviously did a lot of misdeeds. They were, they were an enormous city. They had huge walls. They were gigantic. You could run three chariots at a time around the outskirts of that wall. What you recognize is, is that Jonah went to go tell Nineveh to repent. But he mm. rebelled first. He rebelled first. <laughs> he ended up in a fish. That's his yeah. story. That's not Nineveh's story. That's, That's right. right. It's not Nineveh's story. <laughs> but, Jonah, but it's an important, Jonah part. It's an important part of the story <laughs> because until he was in the fish and got vomited up by the fish, and that really did happen, folks. Um, you bet. He wasn't going to go be obedient and preach to the city of Nineveh because he no. didn't like it. Well, no, he, he had judgment in his heart against he Nineveh that God had to get rid of his judgment in his heart before he could preach 
Boy, yeah. that's true. Because yeah. there's, there's a lot of texts that say or suggest that Nineveh had even killed Jonah's family, mm. that they'd mix their bones into the walls, that, that kind of stuff. Right. And so Jonah had a little bit of a bias against mm. Nineveh. Yeah. But when he went, he declared the word of the Lord. And the bottom line is... He must have been anointed. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, he had to have been a, for, a, for a city well, his, to his, repent. His skin oh. and hair were in acid for days. So That's he was, right. He, he looked probably, different too, yeah. He probably had <laughs> shock rocker going on, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Doug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he came in and said, repent! <laughs> yeah. Shock rock. <laughs> but when he came in, I believe that he declared the word of the Lord, but he said, you have 40 days. Mm -hmm. 40 days and this place will be destroyed. And the, it could have been the surrounding nations that were coming against Nineveh. But they did. They repented, and they heard the word of the Lord, and they repented in sackcloth. They, they went on a fast. They even made the animals do it. Mm -hmm. And God spared that city. I believe one of two things will happen. Either America will repent to repair, or it will repent through fire. It will repent through fire mm -hmm. in 25. Yeah. I want to go back to what you were talking about. Um, you said the lion, the bear, and the third one was Goliath. Yes. I don't know if you've heard a preacher uh, preach about Goliath, but uh, from what I understand is that the root word of Goliath is the same root word we use for pornography. Is that right? Yes. I did not know that, Dr. And Doug. so David had to kill... He had to kill that? That. Oh. Before you could have his throne. How about that? You know what I'm saying? And so what's interesting is that I think that we're in a sexual war. Yeah. And I'm not talking about oh, yeah. the world in a sexual war. Talking about the church? I'm talking about the church yeah. is in a sexual war. Come on, Dr. Dunn. And if we don't get away from being immoral in the church, yes. we, the country will only be judged if the church is judged. Boy, that's something. Come on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if the church doesn't, it's, we don't need the world to repent. Judgment begins we in need, the house of God. We need to repent yes. of, of the immorality. And I think that's the key factor. One of the key factors that God's going to be looking at in this generation and the next year or so is will we hold the power of God through purity? Yes. Or will we still believe that we can hold it with immorality? Oh, that's strong. Do that's you know a word saying? from the Lord. Really? That's it. Well, thank you, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are you thinking about uh, the beginning of 2024? Like for people that are watching, it is important to pray. But um, what do you see happening like in the church and in the world? And of course, I know you're talking mainly about America because we live yes, here. Yes, ma'am. Just because we live here. Right. So what about the rest of the world? Did the Lord show you anything about that? I believe the rest of the world is going to, there's this BRICS nation scenario, and I believe that's going to gain more and more momentum. And the word I saw going into the beginning of the year and throughout the, the spring into summer is money, money, money. Mm -hmm. There's going to be lots of talk about money. Just, I saw dollar signs going around like a clock. If you considered the months of the year, like a clock, money, 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 they would talk about. And God is going to begin. He's already done that even for people giving to Daystar in a way, in an unprecedented way oh. to help Israel and to just uh, get the gospel out. What you guys have done for Israel and what has happened here at Daystar, I just want to commend your leadership, both of you, for what you did uh, for the nations and what you've been doing. I believe this. There also is good news in the word I've seen, really good news. And the word God gave me was diamond seeds. We were talking yeah. about it. How it's seeds of diamond. It's like when you, you sow something under duress, under pain, under difficulty, under trial. It's like a giving up to go up. You really pay it forward and you sow when it hurts with your life financially. I saw diamond seeds and the Lord spoke to me, Psalm 126. Those who've sown in tears mm -hmm. will reap with songs of joy. I believe that's a word for you guys. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a word for this network. I believe it's a word for you, Joni, for you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Doug, that what you've sown in tears and said, we know what God's leading us to do, so mm -hmm. we're going to do it. Amen. I believe you're going to see a return on that. And I believe many people will come and say, God has been with you every step of the way. Yeah, and you're not talking about a prosperity mm -hmm. gospel some people resist. But you're talking no. about what God... You know, in the, in the parable of the talents. Yes. He said, okay, the guy with five, yes. okay, he's a servant, didn't know anything, but he went to work and did what he was told to do. Yes. And, he, and he got blessed. He didn't get blessed just, okay, your five turned into 10. Well, that's a blessing. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, now I want you to go run some cities. That's it. Come on. Talk about exponential. It's a faithfulness test. So it's a faithfulness. And, that, yeah. and so if you're in a season where you're being tested in your faithfulness, be faithful. Yeah. Don't give up because in, in time you will reap if you don't get weary. Yeah. And you know what, what I'm sensing is that as you're talking about all this is that there are people that God has really blessed yes, financially. So it's not about the money thing. And, but, but. In, in the times of duress and going through a, a specific trial that you know you're in the middle of when you would maybe want to faint or say, I can't worry about giving to Daystar or my church or whatever, 
God is requiring that of you. And it, it is like you're planting a diamond seed yep. that it, it, you're planting it in, in the time of trouble. And, and that touches the heart of God, doesn't it? It does. Well, it makes God responsible. You know, we, we do this like you guys do. Mm -hmm. If there's a challenge going on, and you know, there's no such thing as the prosperity gospel. There's just the gospel. Right, amen. And then there's God's principle. Amen. Yeah. And so when we, when we are in a moment where we're looking at something and saying, okay, this is going to be a tough season, tough mm -hmm. year, we sow aggressively yeah, 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 yeah. because then we literally say to the Lord, yeah. you're responsible for this. Amen. Yeah. God, yeah. you have a problem. Yeah. And, <laughs> right, right, right. and we move forward that way. And I believe people who have done that in the past with their life, mm -hmm. with their decisions, with everything they had, God is going to promote and exalt in this season. So yeah. Heather, what has been resonating with you as far as what you see the Lord doing in 2024 and of course listening to things that, that God has shown Joseph. So taking taking in there's there's been several other things that he has spoken but taking it all as a whole the biggest thing is the phrase that keeps coming to me is there's no substitute for being exposed to quality. Meaning if you're someone who has not truly been exposed to the presence of God in this season mm -hmm. If you really, if, if you're, if you've been playing church, if you just kind of punch your time clock in on Sundays and call mm. it good, that is not going to do it. No, it's not going to cut Amen. it. You've got to get into the presence of God. But at the same time, you need to surround yourself. You need to be around those who truly have been. If you yourself don't know what the presence of God looks like, you need to surround yourself with those who truly have caught something. Amen and then begin to move in that direction for yourself and begin to grow in the presence of God. It's kind of the difference between a house and a home. Like you can move into a house, but after you spend time in a house, it becomes a home. Mm -hmm. When you give the Holy Spirit time, Amen. you're no longer becoming a house, you become a home. He can, he can be, it becomes a home to him. So being acquainted with the presence of God, and now Amen. you're moving in the presence of God, you truly hear the voice of God, and then it resonates. And making time for yes, Him. And making I know. Time. He'll Absolutely. get me for, for sharing this, but I'm going to share it anyway. He'll get me later. But <laughs> mm -hmm. last night, we were like getting ready to go to bed, and then all of a sudden, He disappears. And I'm like, where did He go? And He was gone for a little bit, and then He comes back. And I was like, where were you? And He said, I was just in there. I was like, well, what were you doing? You know, I was like, well, you were about to go to bed. What were you doing? He's like, just spending time with the Lord. And we, we have to make that time, one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one time. It's so important. I don't want to get into your whole story, Heather, but I really feel like there's someone right now that's really suffering, going through something. You have been through a lot of trauma in your life. <laughs> yeah. And you're sitting there today, I don't see any residue of it. Yeah. But there was a time when you could have lost hope. Oh, yeah. um, just share a little bit about one of those incidents that happened, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to share, sure. where... You, maybe your darkest moment, but God brought you through. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say darkest moment was they were coming to me weekly saying, you're going to die, get your affairs in order. That's um, a bad day. Yeah. What was wrong with <laughs> you? I had double kidney failure. And so I was hereditary. on hereditary and I was on dialysis and with the hopes of a kidney transplant at the time, it was completely impossible to receive one. So there was no good information and so truly, it again was becoming, coming to the end of yourself and getting to know the Lord for myself. Because I was third generation's pastor's kid. Mm -hmm. I heard all the terms, been in all the revivals, yeah. but I needed to know it for myself. Mm -hmm. And so when you can get to a place where you become so confident and your heart becomes so fully persuaded in the Lord that it doesn't matter what's being said on, in this natural mm -hmm. world, you have an assurance in Jesus. So what happened? Tell everybody what happened. Well, uh, that impossible kidney transplant came to pass, and right. I did receive a kidney. And um, out of that, I have gained full quality of life. And wow. Um, wow. So would you say that was a miraculous thing that happened? It was an impossible miracle. Yeah. Nobody qualified. Nothing worked. Her antibodies were so high. She was dying in the dialysis chair for three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. And finally, it came through, and we rejoiced. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a miracle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes, yeah. we, sometimes we have to go through impossible to know that he's possible. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And some of you, you might be at home. You know, I really believe how that's word. Uh, the, the consistent voice that we've been hearing is the next revival is a presence revival. Come on. It's not a church revival. Yeah. yeah. It's a presence revival where yeah. we get into the, at the closet with Jesus and we decide that we want revival. 
Now, some of you at home, you might be like struggling. Maybe you do have a health issue or a financial issue, and we want you to call the number 1-800-329-0029. But some of you, you know that God's knocking at your door, that He wants great things from you, and you're kind of struggling, and maybe you haven't given your heart to Him. Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give your heart to Him. Yeah, come on. You got nothing to lose. I've been addicted, abandoned, neglected. I get all that. But Jesus Christ restores and he multiplies and grows. And he wants to do that with you and your heart and your life and your family. And if you just say this simple prayer, you could change your entire life right now, this minute. Just say, Jesus. 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 Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Forgive me. Forgive, Forgive me. me. Come into my heart. Come, Come into, into my heart. heart. Have home. Have home. In me. In, in me. me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 If you said that prayer with your heart, I mean your heart, you just received eternal life. Joseph, what do you feel like the Lord is saying right now? Just kind of flow with the Holy Spirit as you feel led. Yes, ma'am. I believe the Lord is saying to people, don't be afraid. That's number one. Don't fear. Don't shrink back. On a bad day, you're anointed for this. You were born for this time. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the very best there is. And remember this, a man or woman, that's you, with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture gone mad. This world's gonna get wild this year, but the Lord is calling you higher. Listen, if things are too small, men fight. Men and women, everybody squabbles and difficulty happens, but if it's big enough, men will unite. And where we're headed as a culture and as the church, God is gonna bring a unification to stand against this onslaught of this Goliath spirit. We're gonna do the impossible this year. An extension of mercy has come to your house, it's come to this nation, it's come to all the nations that are watching. God's not gonna leave you, he's not gonna forsake you. I sense the Lord healing somebody in their thyroid right now as I'm looking at you. I sense the Lord beginning to fix joints in knees. I see somebody that got a terrible diagnosis with a tumor and this, this word came and the Lord said, that is not the last word. There is another round coming for you. I see two business partners that had a fallout and God brought it, he's bringing it a recompense, a return to what was important in the beginning. And I see a healing coming to that scenario. God is making a way right now. Listen, when David fought Goliath, the political leadership in his nation was terrible. Saul was in charge and here comes Goliath, fee fi fo fum. And I got to tell you, the Lord sent in a young, ruddy, going red man of God that stood up in the blood of the lamb, we'll call it that, and began to say, I will stand against this non-covenanted entity and bring victory forward. I see that for your life. I see God breaking you out. You today something that the Spirit of the Lord is going to speak to you. I know you're going to get a breakthrough with what I'm about to release to you. The Spirit of the Lord wants you to win more than you do. God wants America rescued more than we do. He wants the nations to do well. He does not want the end to come yet. The Spirit of the Lord wants us to rise up as the body and see victory. But having said that, I'm going to share a few things that will be monumental and empowering for you to stand against the onslaught of this thug, wicked, demon, antichrist agenda that's trying to stop the momentum of the ecclesia and stop your life. Now, I got hope in this, so please pay very close attention as I know God's going to minister to you through this moment. So what I began to see earlier on this season was indeed this timeline. I saw the nation of America doing this, going down into a time of difficulty and challenge. And in that, I began to see that there was going to be a season of 30, 60, 100 fold of difficulty that we would go down. I saw this being USA. I saw a time where there was a storm coming to the land. And this time with the storm coming to the land, I saw us coming to the other side of this. I believe this begins now in 2024. And then we're going to be in what is known as the Valley of Decision. Now there's hope in this. Because I believe what we do here will depend how it goes into the coming year. But I see us coming back in 30, 60, and 100 fold for the following season. And what this means is, is that as we come back as a nation or nations, whether we repent as a nation or whether we begin to turn to the Lord or whether there is fire that comes on the land, either way, a new season is coming. The new America is coming. Now, I saw something very important for this coming year, and I'm going to draw it quickly for you, and then I want to share what I'm talking about. Let's say this is January, 
This is uh, obviously February, just the months of the year. When we're looking at this, we realize there's seasons and times with the Lord. And I want to draw this out very quickly so I can begin to explain what I saw. Okay, when we're looking at this, it's almost like a clock or a timeline when we're looking at how this operates. I saw something at the beginning of the year, right on December uh, 31st, at the beginning of the year, I saw a door open. I saw this door and it opened. At the same time, I saw a release that took place between January and February in this first quarter, and it was like a river that cascaded into this time frame here, somewhere between July and September. And then I began to see this sign all the way through. The conversation pieces would be about money, 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 all the way up to this time frame here, and all the wars, challenges, and difficulties that would be taking place, what, what's trying to unfold in the nation. But I saw throughout this season of time, an extension of the Lord's mercy. Now, when I saw this mercy, I saw us coming up to what would be the political cycle, things happening here. I saw characters like this standing here looking at this event, this river that I saw that would induce or be started here at what we're looking at now, where we are now, coming through, and then a decision would happen with intercession and prayer I believe we can begin to see a great victory, not just with him or someone like him, but a victory taking place to get him on the other side of this. Now, for three years, I've also had great concern over this month of October, the month of October. But I saw this. If we pray, I believe we get to the other side of this. And a number of things could begin to happen this coming year that I believe will be really profound or into 25. Should we pray? Should we see victory? I saw the biggest uh, return of liberty and freedom that we've ever seen in a generation. And here's what I mean by this. I believe the Lord is saying very clearly to many of us who are watching this right now that if we pray, he can resolve this debt. I know that is a strange and difficult thing to say or even prophesy. But I ask the Lord, how? if we get to the other side of all their plans and the characters they induce in this river that will stand out at this time more than ever, how will we see the victory of whether it be this character or others get to the other side? How will we begin to fix all that we've already experienced? And the Lord spoke one word to me. The national debt can be solved by oil. Drill, drill, drill. That's the words I heard. And that's how God would begin to bring resolve to that. Also, I saw uh, the, the largest mass deportation of wrong individuals being on this side of where they're supposed to be. I saw that as another thing that could come. But again, the Spirit of the Lord began to show me that if we pray, we can begin to see an unprecedented turnaround of some of these impossible events. If we do not pray, America is going to come to its knees one way or another, either by fire or by Nineveh. Now, here's the good part, and I want you to hear this very clearly. Psalm 126 says something very powerful. Please hear me. Because what I saw at the end of this time is the door opened in this season. This is a cycle of mercy and there's going to be challenges. But then I saw coming to December 31st again, going into 25, I saw the door slam shut. And the Lord said it will be at that time, the valley of decision. And the valley of decision will come. And when this begins to happen, the Lord is saying it'll either be Nineveh or fire. Either way, America will be made new one way or another. But I'm telling you, I've got good news for you. Please hear me right now. Psalm 126, it says this. It says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, it begins to say, we were like those who dream. I am telling you right now, it may be dark in Egypt, but it will be light in Goshen. The spirit of the Lord is with you and light will shine right from your very vessel. He's going to bring you out from among them this season. There's an anointing upon you and your family and your children, no matter what the world throws at us, that we stand up and we overcome it by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And it goes on to say this, verse two, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. I am here to tell you by the spirit of the Lord that right now on a bad day, you're anointed to be the very best there is. God is calling you and a great marking and a great equipping and an awakening is coming to you at this time. Now hear me just a little further. This is vital. Bring back our captivity, O Lord. Verse 5 is what I really want you to hear. 
Listen to me very carefully. Wherever you are, you may have crisis fatigue. You may be looking at things that are going on in your family. And the Lord is saying, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Look at this. Verse five, it says, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Are you ready to sing? Are you ready for some breakthrough in your life? Are you ready to experience the fullness of God in the hour of visitation? That is now. It goes on into verse six. He will continually, he who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. What does that mean? It means you're going to give and what you've given in the past, now is the time of breakthrough. I see an unprecedented return of lands that were taken unjustly. I see things that went away from you that belong to you coming back to you. I see the spirit of the Lord empowering you with an uncharacteristic, unconventional grace in the middle of the mercy that this land is experiencing. Listen, this nation, the one I'm standing in right now, federally overturned one of the greatest travesties in our nation's history. And the Lord spoke and said, there will be another round of mercy because of this. And I'm telling you, we've got one more round coming. We've got an ability. This is not the end, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some hope to step into. And the Lord needs you. He needs you. Whether you are alone, whether you are married, whether you're young, children, or whether you're well along in years, The Lord is saying to you right now, I have great need of you. I need your cooperation. I need you to pray with me. I need you to bring your word and your faith to me. So together we could begin to change and overt and turn away this destruction that's trying to come to the land. Listen to me. The devil knows that the Ecclesia United can stop the onslaught that's trying to come. And I'm telling you right now, this is a season of diamond seeds, diamond seeds. What you sowed in the last seasons, listen, everybody has passed a test. You're coming to a new time now. If you've passed the tests, now you'll get a new mantle. You'll get a new anointing, a new breakthrough to stand in the hour of adversity. And if you've failed tests, today's a brand new day. It's time for you to absolutely surrender to the Lord and watch victory begin to multiply in your life. I'm here to tell you right now by the word of the Lord, God is not done with America. He's not done with the nations. Difficult days are coming, but you are going to shine brightly in the midst of them. You don't have to have no hope. You can rise up in faith. The hour of our visitation is here. Are you ready? God's waiting on you and he loves you. Listen to me. Jesus loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. We might as well turn and stand with him like never before, because this is the hour. This is the time. And great is the victory that's coming upon you and your children's children. I hope you'll meditate on this word. Psalm 126. I hope you'll begin to meditate and receive what the Lord is saying. And here's one final thought I want to say to you. Turn away from all fear. Let not your heart be troubled. Rise up. And I'm telling you, your greatest days are right in front of you. This is not the end. It's time to live and breathe and step into all God has for you. Jesus loves you. And so do we. God bless you. Amen. Where you turn today, we see concerning headlines. We see unruly protests, corruption, deception, and more taking our streets, our capitals, our schools, and even the world around us. But are we on the verge of a major shift? Well, today, Joseph Z is here to share what God has been revealing to him about 2024. Now, I don't want to get over into what you're going to share in a little bit on the board, but can you just talk a little bit about when God started speaking to you about 2024? Because here we are, folks, we're in 2024. I started hearing from uh, the voice of the Lord in 2020, Joni, about 2024. Wow. And the Lord opened up a window, said that there'd be a window in 22 and how things would begin to be shaped and formed. We get a preview of 24. And 24 is something that I've carried in my spirit for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we're in a valley of decision. We're coming into one now very powerfully. But I have a really strong sense about something, and I think this is great. And I, I so enjoy being at Table Talk because there's a prophetic anointing here. This is a house of prophecy. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank you again, Joni, for that. You, I, I kind of, when people ask me, what's Joni Lamb like? I say, well, she's kind of like the prophet wrangler. She brings them all in <laughs> and <laughs> sorts them out. I like out. that title. <laughs> I like that. That's accurate. So, <laughs> the word I have is justice as well. 
okay. that there'll be a sense of justice. But with that justice, mm -hmm. we realize that it'll be like the rain falling, right? We realize the rain falls in the just and the unjust mm -hmm. alike. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in 1 Kings 18, this is so encouraging to me. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah's there and he's praying for rain. He's praying and praying and praying. And at the end of this prayer, suddenly he said, get up for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He girded up his, his robe and began to run ahead of Ahab. Mm -hmm. And here's the word in this. In this time of justice, we will outrun our enemies in the rain. Mm -hmm. The rain that falls on the just and the Ooh, unjust. There's gonna be a supernatural anointing to outrun our enemies in the rain. Mm. Wow, that's, that's so amazing. Cool. I know one of the things you shared that I really felt would be important for you to hear, those of you that are listening, because some of you watching, you 2023 was tough for you. I mean, some of you lost your job. Some of you lost a loved one. Some of you are struggling with something going on in your body uh, personally. Um, and you just feel like you're in the middle of a storm and you don't see any way out of it. And yet you do love God but you just, you're just about ready to faint. Well, that's why you're watching today because the Lord's saying, you know, be, be, don't be weary in well-doing and, mm -hmm. and don't faint mm -hmm. because there is an answer coming. And one of the things the Lord assured you about for people who have been tested. Yeah, that's right. This was a big thing. A I don't, have you thing. ever had this before exactly no, like this? Okay, no. So share about that. The word that I got, Joni, was diamond seeds. You know, it's an interesting word, you know, mm -hmm. and I was praying and oftentimes on my broadcast. And this and, isn't about prosperity, by the way. No, it's this not. It's not prosperity gospel. No, it's not. It, but diamond seeds, it's yes. so profound. That's right. And it, yeah, it's sometimes those connotations jump in people's mind, but that's not what this is. I began to see um, people that had sowed in tears, mm -hmm. people that had paid the price when nobody was looking, how their character was through a difficult season, difficult times. Mm -hmm. I began to watch them press in and pass test after test mm -hmm. after test when nobody was applauding, nobody was there, uh, whether it was sickness, whether it was hardship, whether it was relational, whether it was financial. And the Lord began to speak to me and say, these are like seeds that go in the ground under great pressure and duress, but they will come back. Mm -hmm. Like if you put coal in the ground, <laughs> it'll come back as a diamond. And they're diamond seeds. And a lot of people, they'll lose that battle in what I call the seed war. They put that in the ground and then a war begins. Like they've made the right choice. They've had character. They pass the test, but then comes time and you fight the battle of time. And that's where the seed war is. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me though that this is the hour for many people who've had ease. They've had all these things. Now we're coming in the time where everything's going to be revealed and the diamonds will come out. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the people who paid it forward. You know, what came to me as you were talking is that there's someone watching that, um, you just you made the decision. It wasn't an easy decision, but you made the decision to plant seeds of forgiveness, amen, and seeds of love, and se yes. seeds of mercy, yes. and seeds of grace. Although you had it within your hand to do harm, but you didn't. But you could have, but you didn't. That was that was a diamond seed that was planted. And you know the the word of God is true, and yet the and that the the laws of reciprocity are true. Yes. And what you plant, yes. if you plant love, you're going to yeah. get love. Yes. You plant hatred, you're going to get hatred. You plant judgment, you're going to get judgment. You plant forgiveness, you're going to get forgiveness. How mm. important is that it, in all this? It's so vital. Our words have power. And I think a very wise person once said it this way: that whatever you say, just add the words after that, and that's how I want it to be. Mm. That's exactly how I want it to mm. be. So if you say life, you know something good about your children your life, your future, or your own self, then add the words, and that's really how I want it. Yeah. Or negative, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. That's how I want it to be. I believe if you do that, it'll check you, and you start understanding where you're really at, but our, our, the tongue has life and death in it. Mm -hmm. And when, especially when you add some prophetic hot sauce to that, yeah. mm -hmm. you add some juice to that, some voltage, you'll realize that then when you say things with emotion behind something, yeah. it projects yes. it even further into the spirit, mm -hmm. yeah. and it'll come back unto you. Now, I know for 2024, you said that Originally, you you saw you you heard one word for 2024, mm -hmm. but as we were going into 2024, yes. the Lord said something different to it's you. It's true, Joni. So in the beginning of the, the the cycle, coming up to 2024, I heard the war, the roar, more, and I, and those are still powerful, potent words. But right after New Year's Eve, you know, we were doing a New Year's scenario. Right after that, I was praying and I started to meditate, and I heard a door open. Like it opened to the year. And it went all the way around the year until the following New Year's. And then I heard the door close. Bam. Like it shut. And the Lord said that will be the valley of decision where America, specifically America, will either go the way of Nineveh or it'll go the way of fire. But either way, America will change. 
it'll either repent and repair or it'll bow to its knees through fire. Mm -hmm. But there will be a new America on the other side of it either way. For people watching and they don't know what happened to the city of Nineveh yes. in the Old Testament. Explain that. So Nineveh was a, a magnificent city. It was actually at the time one of the biggest, if not the biggest city. It was something like 18 miles across. It was just massive. It would be something like what Los Angeles would be. Huge. To America. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the walls were so high you could run three chariots around the top of it wide. Uh, it, it was massive. And they were just people that didn't know their right hand from their left hand. And Jonah gets sent. And he was sent there. And he didn't want to go. We understand that. But Nineveh was a unrighteous just ungodly yeah. scenario yes. and yet the Lord still had mercy on them yes. and the word came said if you don't repent you're done in 40 days and it could have been by an outside force what what big event took place in America that touched the heart of God okay this is strong so in 2020 the Spirit of the Lord came to me while I was on my live broadcast and I began to write on our whiteboard as I do and I saw these words and I actually had people join me say you can't say that but I had the word of the Lord come to me, so I have a deal with the Holy Spirit. If I see it, I will say it if he tells mm -hmm. me to, no matter what it looks like. So I wrote on the whiteboard, unprecedented ruling by the Supreme Court, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, the Lord said, say it, so I said it. Then we see back in uh, 22, around June of 22, that Roe v. Wade was overturned, and we prophesied politically it would be an earthquake. Then Brett Baer comes on the news and says, politically, this is an earthquake. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord spoke to me this coming year and said, as we just declared, that grace was upon us. But because we're coming into the time we're in and so many seeds are crying out of negativity also, that we've gone from a time of grace to a time of mercy because of Roe v. Wade being overturned. Mm -hmm. That there was a federal overturning of Roe v. Wade. And because of that, the Lord said, federally, I will hold this together with mercy. Mercy, we don't, the nation does not deserve That's it. True. But God has seen many people turning to him and saying, help us, Lord. Yes. People getting baptized, turning yes. to the Lord. He hears that. And I believe that we are salt and light preserving this place. You know, and I just want to say, because I really just felt that as we were talking, there's somebody watching and you have Right. I want you to know that we are not condemning you, that Amen. God loves you. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason you made that decision, um, that's between you and God. But we stand for life Amen. because... We believe that an eternal soul is created when a sperm and an egg come together. There's actually science that shows there's a, a, a explosion mm -hmm. and a light that takes place. And, we, and of course, that eternal soul uh, will live forever. Mm -hmm. So um, for those of you that had an abortion, I want you to know that you have a child, uh, if you know the Lord, that you'll see in heaven. So don't beat yourself up on that. We love you. So good. God will forgive you. But we talk about this because life is so important to God. And that's why you believe that mercy was extended. I do. Because as a nation, that was overturned. And I think I've heard even recently up to 40, 50,000 babies have actually been saved as yes. a result of Roe v. Wade. Yes, and adoptions on the rise. Things are happening. Yes. So I'm so grateful. And we do love everybody regardless of what's happened. The Lord loves us. Um, but I see that. And you know, another spirit I see coming on the scene, and this is interesting. The Lord gave me this word, and I thought, what is this about? And the Spirit of the Lord said the word to me, Maccabees. The word Maccabees. Oh, cool. That there would be, yeah, the Maccabees stood up. And what happened is there's a man named Mattathias. Uh, he was told by the, the nation that was invading and pushing uh, their ideals on them that you will do X, Y, and Z. He said, no, I won't. And then he stood up and actually acted out with action. Like he took life of people, did all the things. His son stood up in his stead after that. Judas the Hammer Maccabees. Wow. And he held off the onslaught of the enemy. He fought back and they said, no, you move. I'm not moving, you move. And everybody they sent against him, he'd defeat them until ultimately... Jerusalem was retaken. Well, we've been talking about what the Lord has shown Joseph for 2024, and one of the things he revealed was a month-by-month -month timetable for what we will be facing and how the church needs to intercede and pray. So Joseph is over at the board, and I'll need him to unpack that for us. Joseph, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do it. Well, one of the things I want to say right as I get into this, too, just with everybody, is, listen, the words that we prophesy never supersede. They never go beyond the Word of God. It's like the old saying goes, uh, gift 
lifting will take you to the top of the mountain, but character will keep you there. And the word of God is the only way we right size character and the only way we right size prophecy. And uh, so what I'm about to share with you is, uh, is going to be revelatory, but also make sure you're reading that Bible and keeping your heart and mind in that. Okay, so let's take a look at this one, very briefly. One of the things I saw immediately uh, earlier on in the season previous to this was this. I saw the nation of the United States at 30, 60, 100 fold going down. I saw them on a downward trajectory. That's the nation we're in, of course. Then I saw it coming back at 30, 60, and 100 fold. And the Lord spoke to me it would be the new America. Okay, the new America was coming, but it didn't mean better necessarily. It just meant new. But when we're looking at this, I also saw this season we're coming into of a storm, a very serious storm that would come. And I believe this is where we are headed right now. I believe this is where we are. But we're seeing that this will also be the valley of decision. Hmm. I believe this is where we're going. And from this storm, revival will come. I believe uh, reformers, there will be a reformation that takes place. And whether we uh, go in the right directions or not, we're going to see a new America either way we go here. But here's the thing I began to see at the beginning of this year. I was praying about this, and I began to see uh, this timeline. And I'll just do it like, like this. I saw January, of course. So I'm just going to write this out very quickly. February, we realized March, all the months of the year. Uh, April, May, I started to see things that the Lord was saying during this time. Then we saw uh, August. August. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> over here for <laughs> and then December of course now when we're looking at this I began to recognize that there was a lot taking place in the beginning of this year we walked into it and as, as we were talking about earlier Joni as we walked into the beginning of this year I, I saw the war the roar and more the spirit of the Lord helping us during this time that more breakthrough would happen but then I saw a door open I saw the door begin to open and I saw this, and it's like I heard it, saw it, and talked with our intercessors about it, and a door opened going into January. And I thought, that is good, unexpected. And I believe this door is that door of mercy, okay? This door of mercy. Going all the way around this time, then at this time again, a year out, I heard the door slam shut. Now, does that mean the end? Is it impending doom? That is not what I'm saying. But I sense the door slamming shut of the season of mercy, and we will be in a time of decision by here. What will we do as a nation? What will we do going forward? There's a lot coming with this. Now, during the same time frame, the watchword I heard was money, money, money. And when I mean money, 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 I'm not talking about, you know, prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about those kind of things. The watchword are people are going to be talking about the money. There's going to be a lot of serious events going on with the money and economy and all this. And this is going to be what many people start prophesying more about, talking about. And I saw this. But at the same time, in this window of time, I saw something happening here, and it was like a river that came to this time frame here, like a river. And actions that are being taken in quarter one are going to impact what's going to happen at this time frame here into the fall time. Now, I'm just going to share this with, uh, you know, with you to discern and consider. But for the last three years, I've been very concerned about the month of October. And every year, I intercede heavily when we come into the month of October. And I believe we're coming into that season again where something very serious and monumental could be happening in this month. Now, I believe we can intercede because we know Matthew 24, for example. If we're going to be biblical... Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, Jesus said, there is impending things coming. But here's the good news, the silver lining. Mm. He, Jesus also said, pray that when these things come, it doesn't happen on the Sabbath or in the winter. Ooh, Two things. Jesus yeah. said, pray. You know, you're watching at home. You're, all, you're watching with us right now. Remember this word, pray. You see these things and we pray. Mm. In other words, it's the great co-mission. It's not the great mission. God needs his body to operate with him. And if we pray, there's things that will eventually come in prophecy that we can't alter on a biblical level. But I do believe there's things that we see that if we pray, Jesus said, pray it doesn't happen on the Sabbath and pray it doesn't happen in the winter. What that tells me is we might be able to alter timelines and alter when certain things happen. But I see this and I believe we need to pray about October. Do you think that has to do with the election? I do. Yeah. Mm. I think it has to do with the election. I think the election is going to be a mess no matter who wins. Right. I think it's going to be challenging no matter what happens beforehand, afterwards, all of it. I've seen two candidates and I believe this river here, Rachel, 
is, is involved with um, a, I saw a character um, being placed here. It's like a, an individual that would show up more at this time frame than is even really out front here. Now, I have thoughts about this, but I don't have clarity, so I'm not going to try to speculate. But I saw a character coming. I saw 45 here and making a decision. And without the proper prayer, if we don't prayer cover this, uh, he, will not, uh, he will not make it in the natural. But I do believe there's going to be a miracle because, again, this, again, is covered by mercy. I see mercy over this whole time frame. So the mercy of God is in all of this. But I'm looking at this, and then I, I've been praying against these words too, a dark November. Um, and this is not for fear. Listen, we don't say these things to scare anybody. We say them to prepare. Right. We, this is not to scare you. It's to prepare you. And we realize Acts chapter 11, Agabus said, hey, a famine's coming. And some people say, that's fear-based. No, it's not fear-based. The church rallied and met that need. They yes. met the requirements, and they brought good change. Mm -hmm. I believe this is not the end. It's not over with, but we're going to see some radical things happening. There's many more things I could begin to go into, but this is a snapshot of what I saw. They're going to induce change here. They're making decisions now. Uh, I like to call the person that's in office right now the Manchurian candidate. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Manchurian candidate is uh, doing what he's doing, and he's got the Easter Bunny as a GPS system trying to figure out where he's at. But when we're looking at this, I believe that his day is already over, and if he's useful, they'll keep him going. If he's not useful, they'll make a great change. And so right now, I see that we're, we got this time frame to pray, and then we're going to start seeing change between the end of this month into this month, this window, where they're already making decisions that'll be launched upon us at this time. Um, if he, the, the president, the former president, gets out of the legal fights that they're in, he's unbeatable, and I think the last option they have is to take his life. But we have to pray. So Joseph, what about the great revival that everyone has talked about this coming? That's going to be in the storm. Okay. I believe the great revival will be here. When we're talking great awakening, I believe that it's going to break out under pressure. And this is where the diamond seeds are that we talked about. Right. This is where those who sowed in tears will reap in songs of joy. The reformers will be birthed out of this. The Lord told me in 2015, I went to Trump Tower, and I'm not just all about a certain candidate, but the Lord sent me there. In 2015, I stood in Trump Tower, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I said, God, am I here to announce who the next president's going to be? And the Lord said, I've not graced you to know that. Hmm. I thought, oh, I thought I was going to be cool for a moment. Hmm. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, I've called you to pray for this man and pray for the land. I said, okay. What's, I said, Lord, is America going to go down? Is America over with? And the Spirit of the Lord said to me very strongly, he said, no, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. Mm. And that's Generation Alpha. Alpha's coming. Generation Alpha, they're not going to be like some of the other people that have uh, played uh, patty cake with the way the world's run things. They're not going to get all caught up in the minutia of, of ignorance and ideologies that just make people weak. Generation Alpha is going to live up to its name. Like, uh, I'm thinking of your, your children, you guys. Mm -hmm. Generation Alpha, raw. They're going to be like, uh-uh, you move. Mm -hmm. yeah. You move. Are they going to roar? What's that? Are they going to roar? They're going to roar. Well, they're going to say Mufasa, ooh, right? <laughs> and, and they're going to come through this, and it's going to be powerful. They will be the thing that induces the Reformation. Now, what America looks like during that time is a very challenging picture. But I believe the Reformation will come anyway. But we're not of kingdoms of man. Mm -hmm. We're of the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say come is on the back, mandate? Come on back yes, to the table, Joseph. I think okay. we're just about out of time. Go ahead, Cindy. What would you say is the mandate for the church then regarding 2024? The mandate for the church is uh, we have a mandate in our ministry that God gave me. And this word million is starting to pop up everywhere. And here's what I mean by this. We're called to raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded prophetic reformers to go win a billion because we want to make God rich. We want to make God rich with souls, mm -hmm. with the one thing. He, yes. What do you give somebody who has everything? Right. The one thing they don't have. Mm, yeah. And in God's case, it's his lost creation. Mm, yeah. And so I believe that we need to disciple, preach the gospel, uh, get as many people saved as we can. On that note, would you just take a moment, for those of you that are watching and you're saying, this is all very interesting, but I don't really know the Lord or have a relationship with him. I don't even know how to do that. We'd just like to uh, give you the opportunity to receive Jesus. That's really mm -hmm. what we're all about. Amen. Because uh, just like Joseph said, the greatest thing that we can do in this life is lead someone to the saving knowledge of Christ because it, we're going to live forever and be beyond this life. This life is just a stepping stone to the life to come. It's eternity. And my question is, are you ready 
to meet the Lord. Would you just lead us and we'll pray after you? Yes, ma'am. Well, we just want to say this also. When we offer people Jesus, we are not offering you the plague. Mm -hmm. This is life and life more abundantly. Yes, it's yes. only forever. <laughs> Praise God. Well, let me just say this. We just say out loud, Jesus, Jesus. I need you. I, need I you. repent of my, way of, I repent of my way of doing things. I give you my life. I, give you my life. I exchange my life for your life. Rescue me, Jesus. I give myself to you. And I believe because I've called on your name that I am saved. Thank you for rescuing me. I'll serve you, Lord Jesus. All my days. Amen. Amen. The greatest prayer that you can pray and uh, so excited about what God has for you in the days ahead. Well, we are out of time. Hope you've been encouraged today. I want you to remember that even in the midst of chaos, trials, uncertainty, God's light shines the brightest. Yes. And if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, then you can have everything you need to face the days ahead because the Holy Spirit is here upon the earth to lead and guide us into all truth. And uh, we can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's part of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he, His presence is on the earth. It's what drew you to watch the show. It's why you're still watching right now. That is the presence of God in your life. Well, if you're watching today and the enemy's trying to tell you that you need to be afraid or that, you know, uh, you're not going to make it or you're not ready to meet the Lord. He's a liar for you. I do want to thank Joseph for joining us at the table. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at josephz.com. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, Thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly. And we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it. And I hope you become a part of our partner family today. Have you noticed the collision of good and evil, light versus darkness? It's happening every day right in front of us. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Breaking Hell's Economy. It's a prophetic book dealing with this exact issue. What we're facing right now is a collision of kingdoms. It's the kingdom of darkness versus God's kingdom. It's the kingdom of light versus the gates of hell. And what you're seeing is this collision taking place, but we are promised that the church, the called out ones, would overcome and we would never be taken over by the gates of hell. In the times we're living in, you can see incredible, outstanding breakthrough in every area of your life. Much like the children of Israel that went through the darkness and shined as a light in Goshen in the middle of difficulty. This book is a prophetic book for you and your family to thrive in the middle of difficult times. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, and that's what we're seeing over and over again, is this challenge. You've seen the Great Depression back in the 20s and 30s. You've seen wars and world wars and many things that have come against society. And this pattern repeats itself. And I'm here to tell you today, even Jesus dealt with the same issue that we're facing today when he was a child. Many people have been through this before, and the outcome determines what you believe. What you believe and what you know will bring a great outcome for you. And this book is a prophetic book that will help you navigate and break out of this present evil age. Get ready to be the light in darkness. Get ready to be the light in Goshen that God has called you to be. Breaking Hell's Economy is for you. I encourage you to order your copy today.